Yo! Video games. What up dudes, Matt here with Yo Video Games, and I'm back with another Yo Video Games review under our new review format. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a game I recently played, and probably most of you missed, that came out in late April from Sega, and that was Sakura Wars. Surprise, surprise, it's not a Sonic or a Yakuza game. So, what the hell is a Sakura Wars? Well, it's actually a pretty popular series in Japan that's been running since the Sega Saturn. Back then it was a strategy RPG mixed with a visual novel dating simulator set in a steampunk world where you command as a captain a a squadron of all female soldiers in these bubbly little cute mechs and they fight off a demon invasion of Tokyo. It was pretty big on the Saturn, but there was kind of just one problem. If you go back to the 90s, you probably might remember that the video game landscape was a lot different back then, and the idea of a dating sim slash visual novel was pretty much considered a death sentence in North America. Pretty, There was almost no precedent for it. There was not really a whole lot of demand. Hell, this is kind of like proto-internet day, so there wasn't even really any way to really gauge how much interest there was outside of the reader's comment sections of your local EGM or GamePro. So, it's kind of understandable why this series never really came to North America. Now, of course, I am aware that the fifth game came out on the Wii and PS2 by Xseed, but it was late in the Wii's life, and it pretty much went under the radar pretty quickly, of course. So, yeah, late last year, Sega released a brand new Sakura Wars game for the PS4 in Japan, and it's even though it's just called Sakura Wars, not Sakura Wars 6 for whatever reason, it's technically chronologically a sequel. It follows up about like 20 years or so later after the original Sakura Wars games ended. I don't know, maybe, maybe 20 is too long, maybe it's 10. I think it's 10. Anyways, uh, point being that even though it's called just Sakura Wars 1, it is a follow-up, but it's also a soft reboot in that Jurassic World sort of way where it's set so many years later and it's sort of just like softly rebooting the whole storyline even though it does have actual callbacks to the original. However, one big change happened, and not was and it wasn't just because like, hey, the game actually came out in North America this time. It was that it's no longer a strategy RPG like Fire Emblem or Ogre, ba or, I'm sorry, Tactics Ogre, or uh, Shining Force. It's now a very, very uh, action-heavy, well, just real-time action kind of Dynasty Warriors light, uh, just very much on that side. So. Yeah, despite the fact that Fire Emblem became a huge success out here, uh, and the fact that Sakura Wars really uh, popularized strategy RPGs with dating sim aspects, uh, they just, Sega decided in all their infinite wisdom as a company uh, that it was time to turn it into an action RPG. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. I mean, I guess they were trying to go for a more mainstream appeal. Uh, go for something like, hey, you know, more people would be interested if it was just hack and slash. But the reality is, is that if you're interested in this game, and just by looking at the box art, you probably will know right away if you are or not, or not interested. The one thing you probably should be aware of, that is three-fourths visual novel dating sim, one-fourth Dynasty Warriors light. And when I mean light, I mean like it's very light like not a lot of depth to the combat at all it's very very easy i i consistently got s ranks without even trying all that hard so uh you can switch up from the main character to other uh girls in the squadron so you can get like different play styles like range characters or more more melee focused characters and what yeah but at the end of the day it's still just very easy to go through this game like the the Battles and boss battles, boss attacks, they're just not very challenging at all. So if you're hoping for something like that, you're not really going to get it here. And again, it's only about a fourth of the game is actually combat. The rest of it is basically living out this this anime in visual novel slash dating sim format. Uh, now, that's really going to be right, the, right the, the Achilles heel or just the selling point right there for depending on who you are because... Uh, it's kind of one of the game's biggest weaknesses and its greatest strength is that it is just unabashedly 100% fully committed to what it is, and that is it's a fucking anime. And I kind of actually dug this aspect of it. Also that it it harkened back to a very, very uh, 90s, late 90s style of, of anime styling, just in setting and writing and, and every aspect of it. Um, and, and I gotta say, like, 
I appreciated the sort of earnesty in the game, like the sort of just, it knows what it is, it doesn't shy away from it, it's not kind of like trying to sell you on, on it being anything other than what it appears to be. So I kind of appreciate the fact that it's just, it is just a really balls to the wall, steampunk anime with magical girls and just uh, weird, stupid uh, harem situations, harem, whatever, however you pronounce it. Uh, it's just, it is what it is, and knows what it is, and it doesn't shy away from it. So I kind of appreciate that, but that's going to be a huge turnoff for some people. You know who I'm talking about. You know, this is basically a nail gun to your ball sack, you know, if you really hate anime. Um, in which case, you'd probably look at the box and not even bother, so... Uh, but if you were hoping that this game was going to be something like East 8, you know, or, or maybe something more like a Dynasty Warriors game with more uh, cutesy anime girls... It, you gotta like kind of pull back a little bit and say no this is mostly a visual novel dating sim and then a tiny bit of a dynasty warriors game and that's kind of like the only thing i really would say is the, is the big thing you should be looking out for your buyer beware if you will um but as far as that goes how was it overall well again like i said the battle system it's pretty generous on its rankings. The things, the bosses and enemies are pretty easy. There is a mode you unlock later in the game that lets you uh, go into a bunch of series of just sort of optional battles. And that's fine, but you'll probably burn yourself out on that pretty quickly. There is a, a uh, you get a little cell phone, a little steampunk cell phone, and you can play this game called Koi Koi. Uh, which is Hanafunda, and uh, you have to learn Hanafunda. And the game doesn't do a great job of teaching you Hanafunda playing cards, So, but if you really wanted to know how to play the game that started Nintendo, uh, you can do that, and that's actually pretty difficult. It's funny how ruthless the AI can be in the Hanafunda minigame, but it's, pro it's pretty brain-dead in the main game, but oh well. <laughs> what have you. Uh, is, so as far as that goes, there's not a ton of variety of things you do. Now, the, the big thing is in the game is that there's a sort of uh, dialogue tree system. And that's kind of the main crux of everything because everything's so chatty in this game. So much of this game is about that visual novel dating sim aspect. So you get a lot of moments where like you tr you think you might be picking the right answer and you and then you don't and then there's like hidden options where sometimes like not responding you know in a certain time limit is the correct way to get out of something but um yeah i mean you, you might be safe scumming a lot if you want to see all the dialogue trees see all the uh dates you can go on what have you um you can sort of scum lord it like in persona where you can start trying to date you can get everyone's like affinity up for you but like there'll come a point where like you can really only date one and you only get one ending so that becomes something where like okay probably gonna want to have a lot of safe scums on hand so yeah if you want to see that so yeah i mean that's that's kind of if you're into that sort of thing and that's that's really where i you know you're gonna draw the line for a lot of people as far as i'm concerned um i i kind of am a little disappointed in the fact that the game is very, very highly skewed towards one, maybe two relationships, because you have about five possibilities. And the game is just very tailor-made towards one, and then there's kind of like a second one, which is kind of like, okay, maybe maybe this is a little bit more strongly implied. And then the other, the other three are kind of like, they don't really, eh. Like the endings you get for the other girls and the other dates are, are not that great. It seems, it seems like it's so tailor-made. For, for a game that's supposed to be about options, it seems like they really put all their heart and soul into the canon coupling storyline, which is boring as fuck. What are you gonna do? Um... It's, again, very anime, so don't expect any sort of realistic human dialogue from these characters, these relationships. Um, I, I do think that they they could have gone a little harder in um, the main character that you play as, because he is, a, he is a named character, he has like a voice and he says stuff. It would have been interesting, I feel, if they had let his personality go in the direction you put him on his answers because he he plays like you know the pure heart of gold uh anime protagonist unless you know you get the option to make him say something lewd or or something mean or mean-spirited but he only says it for the one line and it's like it doesn't follow through it would have been nice if it was like hey if you're gonna play the game as a scumbag make, make him always be a scumbag like in the cutscenes i get i get it that would cause so much more writing and so much more text that they'd have to put into the game possibly even more voice acting but it is 
for a game that is three-fourths just visual novel, I think it's a missed opportunity not to have these at least two different like good and bad paths that the character can go down if not like three or four but yeah he's he's just like your your dopey anime protagonist of good natured goodwill and it's like and then they they give you the option to be a scumbag but then they don't follow through with it in any other text afterwards so that's kind of a disappointment as far as i'm concerned uh but as far as enjoyment, now this is where it kind of all boils down to. I actually had a lot of fun with this game. Uh, like I said, I'm, I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate that it knows what it is. And it's not trying to bullshit you on anything, or it's not trying to pretend it's any sort of high art or anything. And I also appreciate the fact that Sega's not making a Sonic and Yakuza game for fucking once. But as far as that goes, like the storyline's okay. Uh, I don't really have any knowledge or attachment to the original Sakura Wars cast, but holy god, like you don't have to know anything to know that they fridged the fuck out of the original game's characters to a really weird degree and then they they tease you possibly getting to get them back quote unquote like you know see them meet them save them what have you and they just kind of don't follow up with it at all they just kind of leave it as it was like maybe they were planning for sequels i, I thought that was stupid um so as, as far as like the actual storyline of the game goes eh, it's okay like it's it's nothing great there's, again, a lot of missed opportunities there that they could have done to do something like a really cool explosive finale with all the different casts of all the different characters from all the different games coming out. They could have done like a Marvel's Avengers style ending and they just kind of fucking blew it. Um, but yeah, that's 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 probably going to annoy longtime fans more than people like me and new people who haven't played any of the games before. But you even not knowing that, you can still kind of see like, boy, there really seemed like a really good opportunity to have a really cool explosive finale with all the characters from all the games coming back. But nope, just, just kind of left it just hanging there. Uh, and again, that kind of falls through with some of the endings where it just kind of feels like they just kind of left some of the, 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 the endings with the, with the non-canon girl. Like just sort of like, eh, they're okay. They just kind of left this shit hanging there. Um, but again, it's still, it's still an enjoyable game. It looks good. I think it runs on the Hedgehog engine. Um, the, as far as environments and stuff go, like, they let you run around the, the theater stage, uh, base of operations you have, but, uh, for a game that has, you know, a, it could have been a lot more, they, and they let you go around, uh, Tokyo a little bit, but, my god, is it, it could have been so much more. There's a, there's a lot more they could have done with this game, and so, I kind of think it, kind of, you're starting to, if you've been listening this long, you're getting the idea here. Critically, let's talk about it. It's about a 6 out of 10 if we're being kind of generous. The the action is good. It feels fine when you're doing combat, but it's very, very easy. It's hard to lose in this game. And the fact is, is that they, for a game that's mostly about dialogue, they don't really let you branch out. Even though they give you all these dialogue trees, it really could have used uh, a lot more variety in, in the branching of how your character plays out, how the storylines end for the other characters. So... Yeah, I it, that I, I feel like it's just it's just a little bit above average. It's not it's not horrendously boring, um, as long as you're okay with visual novel stuff, as long as you know what you're getting into. It's it's done well. It's got polish, uh, but it's just a little bit above average. So I just say it's a six out of ten critically. Personally, I had a lot of fun with the game. I thought the characters were were kind of endearing. I thought you know it was kind of interesting to see the shenanigans you can get into and then safe scum out of, and I I enjoyed it to that aspect. So I'd give it about an eight on a personal level. So you know you have a good time as long as you know what you're getting into. It is a a unabashed just throwback to '90s era anime, and it knows that and it revels in it. So. I personally enjoyed that aspect of it, but if you're going to look at this critically, yeah, it's just above average. I think there's a lot of lost opportunity here. You know, maybe they could do that and prove it with a sequel, but I don't think that looks very likely since it seems Japan was not thrilled with this game. And I kind of see why, you know, they changed genres and they fridged the original cast. So not a great move on Sega's part, but then again... Sega's not been known to make good decisions almost ever, so being that what it is, I personally enjoyed it. Maybe you guys will too, but if you're looking for a harsh critical review, yeah, it's just above average. But let me know what you guys think, and if you've even heard of this game, let alone played it, and I will see you in the channel. Later, dudes. And I kind of...